This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I'm Daniel Aliash here at the HRS 2025 Scientific Session. And I'm joined today by Dr. Dutch Haber. <laughs> Correct. Um, who presented the Omni IRE three month data, which would um, which studied a middle footprint integrated catheter, um, PFA catheter, uh, for the three month results reporting the safety and efficacy events. Uh, first off, congratulations on a great study. Thank you. So 134 patients enrolled per, pro uh, per protocol analysis, three months. Um, first question I have for you, tell me a little bit about what you found overall. What we found overall is that um, this platform, combining this uh, middle foot catheter together with mapping, uh, is a platform that allows acute isolation of the pulmonary veins with a short fluoroscopy time, and it leads to 100% electrical isolation of the, of, of, of the patients. What was interesting in the study is that this was achieved with a very low uh, complication rate. There were only 3% primary adverse events, and these events were either vascular uh, or one pericarditis, so with an excellent safety profile. And then there was uh, a very interesting part of the study uh, in, in a pre-specified subset group, patients that were willing to undergo um, additional analyses. And this was extra safety analysis and PVI durability analysis. Well, absolutely. I think those are very interesting findings. First off, I always say about PFA, PFA's promise is safety. Everything else is secondary. So I think the fact that the safety track record is really good is incredible. I think you also did a, you know, a nice job as far as analyzing PV restenosis and, re or, and, and having none of that. This is a class effect that we are seeing largely in PFA. Um, and then no tamponades. Um, you know, a question I have for you is looking at your PV, PV, so you go in and you remap the veins, Correct. your PVI durability, okay? You have a great acute success rate. Tell me about your PVI durability, what you found as far as veins. What we observed at vein level is that 85% uh, of the veins were durably uh, isolated. And when we looked at the optimized workflow population, which was the largest uh, group of patients, uh, the durability on the vein level was 89%. Okay. Now, these results for me are, are important because it's multicentric. It's a pre-specified patient group. Patients underwent repeat mapping without having any symptoms. Yeah. And number three is even more important because you have the mapping of baseline and you compare it to the mapping at repeat. So it really evaluates the level of isolation where you did the ablation. And this is unique for uh, mapping integrated systems. Now, um, a follow-up question. The degree um, of experience that your operators had with the catheter, tell me a little bit about that, and then it'll, it'll lead to further follow-up questions from me. So the, the degree of, of, of experience was uh, we had a rolling phase, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that each operator had two patients uh, before uh, patients could enter the main phase of the study. So that was a very limited experience. Of course, uh, the operators were well trained with a point-by-point -point ablation, um, knowing how to turn around catheters in the left atrium. Uh, but it was limited experience in this study. So that's very helpful because as, as we've learned in multiple studies, yeah. especially the, you know, the single shot champion data, et cetera, experience with PFA leads to improvements. Um, and so I think knowing that this is early experience and it's so safe is very helpful. Um, another question, you use the word optimized workflow and that's where your PVI durability uh, improves. Elaborate what that means, optimized workflow. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, the data that we took were from the preclinical um, uh, setting. So we uh, relied heavily on the index that was evaluated in the porcine model. And we heavily relied on the intertech distance that was evaluated. Uh, so we started the, the, the uh, protocol or the study with certain target values for intertech distance and index values for depth. Mm -hmm. And we realized after 28 patients, uh, after not having 
the PV isolation immediately after the first pass that we needed to adopt. So we went to closer intertech distances mm -hmm. and we ensured that the operators ablated with a higher contact force. Mm -hmm. And this alone led to increased PV durability. And honestly, I think there is still room for improvement yeah. uh, for the durability. Um, we were pretty conservative, for instance, on the index on the posterior wall. Mm -hmm. uh, if it turns out to be safe for the esophagus, we might as well ramp up that target value. Yeah. Um, there are also future developments that uh, are currently being evaluated that might lead to yeah. uh, higher PV durability with this kind of catheter. So, um, you know, I think that that's a very, a couple important points that you made. Number one is you're using an ablation index, right? Correct. And within your index, and this is, I think, a stylus or, or, or I think a philosophical difference, mm -hmm the importance of contact force emerges as far as targeting contact force. Now, you know, the literature will show you that contact is important, right? Contact force up to 10 grams can be very helpful, but you, you know, I think this is very interesting data because you're say, you're, you are targeting force and, and that has resulted in improved PV durability. So I think you know, a different ph philosophy and a different uh, scientific evidence base will project moving forward. Um, you know, I get final question for you. Um, so, you know, you, this is largely a European study. Um, low fluoro, mappings integrated, um, very much akin to what I'm used to here in the United States. Uh, but, you know, having spent some time in, at ERA recently, you know, I'm finding that, you know, mapping and uh, mapping guidance or even navigation guidance, as we would call it, is, is not as common in the European workflow. Much more commonly you're seeing fluoro guidance, uh, very, very low ice usage. So tell me you know, where you see this fitting into the European workflow and also uh, you know, what substrates projecting forward. Uh, that, that's a very open question and difficult question, but let, let's, let's stay to the European scene. Um, it is true that we do not use ice because yeah. of budgetary reasons. Uh, mapping in post-field ablation, on the other hand, is again coming back to the field. With the new mapping system available with pentaspline ablation, we see more and more mapping. So one of the reasons we didn't do it, because it was not available. Mm -hmm. I personally believe that mapping is important. Absolutely. Uh, for anatomy, uh, for geometry, for uh, patient-specific substrates, and for this specific catheter, it's for the placement of the tags and for the information that this tag can contain for future developments. When we see patients coming back with reconnection, I want to open that tag and I want to find out why the patient reconnected. So I think mapping in Europe is as important as, as it should be um, in, uh, compared to the US. Well, I appreciate that very important summary. I think, you know, uh, developing an ablation index for PFA, a PFA index, I think will be very, very helpful to operators as they look to titrate energy. Because there is such thing as too much PFA energy, yep. I believe. And so, well, thank you very much for joining me. You're welcome. Congratulations on a great study. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in to Heart Rhythm TV.